I cringe every time someone says this is a democracy. What is a democracy? A democracy has never been a society of freedom. Freedom is not measured by the ability to vote, and voting does not and never has protected your rights. Let me repeat that for those who were not paying attention. Voting does not and never has protected your rights ever. Freedom is measured by the breadth of those things on which we do not vote that leads to individual self-determination. A democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what is for lunch. Freedom is a very capable sheep contesting the choices on the menu. The problem with democracy is at some point in the future the group will want to impose itself against you regardless of your own self-determination and that my friends is called tyranny. No matter what your politicians and modern teachers tell you this nation is not a democracy and was intended to be a republic fairly protecting the rights of all even the rights of the one percent. There has never been any democracy in history, not one that did not devolve into tyranny and oppression of the people. A republic is based on unalienable individual rights that cannot be voted on. What are unalienable rights? Unalienable means something you cannot become alienated or separated from even if you try. A right is an expectation or entitlement of individuals to determine their own destiny as individuals and not as a society. Where do you get these unalienable rights from? Unlike civil rights that are bestowed by the civil authority and can be revoked as easily as they were given, unalienable rights come from God or nature and necessarily come from the will of man and can only be revoked upon expiration of life itself. Either way they are part of the being of every living individual, slave and king alike. Who gets to interpret what those rights are? As we can see from our early American historical experience, it was not the lack of written individual rights, but the interpretation of those rights of one by another that is the real reason that slavery and gender oppression was upheld as long as it was. Look at today's examples. The government determines where and how you can express yourself, how long you express yourself, whether your grievances are redressed, whether you can bear arms or defend yourself, define what is your privacy, where you can experience privacy, what is a reasonable search, and whether you're innocent until proven guilty by a trial or just targeted for extinction by a drone. The control is quite pervasive and untenable. In a truly free society, no one in government, not the Supreme Court or any state court for that matter, can interpret your rights for you. They are your rights. Only the individual can determine what those rights mean to him or her, given their individual expectations of what freedom is. Does society have the right to regulate your rights? The short answer is no. They do not have the right unless the rights of another are being violated. The government is only to supply an impartial stage for the people to fairly resolve disputes among themselves. In 1776, the word regulate 
did not mean what it has come to mean today. Regulate, historically, meant practiced, or to do something regularly in order to become proficient in its execution. The Second Amendment would have a very different interpretation if its original meaning was left intact. The intent in starting this nation was to have a capable and free people, not a controlled, dependent society. As long as the rights of others are not violated, society has no right to control the exercise of individual free will, for better or worse. Does that mean we can use or misuse our rights? With all rights comes an equal responsibility for the use or misuse of those rights. Life is about choices, good and bad, and the consequences of those choices, also good and bad. Individual lessons learned from those consequences are invaluable in the formation of the individual self. Oftentimes the lessons learned from pain teaches us the most about ourselves. To rob an individual of such important lessons is robbing that individual of the gift of acquired wisdom. It should never be illegal to say anything, including yelling fire in a crowded theater in the absence of fire, because it is not the place of government to limit the free will of choice to do good or evil. However, those who have misused their rights and caused injury or loss to others or infringe upon the rights of others should be held responsible by their peers and not government for the consequences of that choice. Licenses and permits are only state tools of control and income generation and have no bearing on aptitude or safety. Did your parents need a license to cook and take care of your family? Let us keep on this path and don't worry, they will eventually need one. Do you have rights because you're an American citizen? No. You have rights because you are alive, as does any individual, regardless of nationality. Can these rights be removed from you for society's best interest or safety? Never. No exception, no reason whatsoever, for any reason lest we lose our individual determination and thus must fight under penalty of death to regain it after freedom has been lost. And who defends your rights? The police and the courts do not defend your rights. They defend the interest of the state and government where they derive their power the only one who can truly defend your rights is you. And how do I defend my rights? By any means the individual feels necessary to defend the right being violated. Only you can decide because no one can decide for you. Although peace is preferable violence should never be ruled out in any defensive situation and should be relegated to the choice of last resort. Remember, those that make peaceful change impossible make violent revolution inevitable. What if your government is the one violating your rights? As written by Thomas Jefferson, with the input from John Adams, Ben Franklin, and others who were incredibly learned students of history. Quote, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government. All experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves 
by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security." End quote. Then you have only two choices. Live as a slave, a cared for dependent of a despotic system, or make things incredibly bad for those who wish to enslave you and assert your right to be free. Not the best of choices, but a choice nonetheless. No one said freedom would be free. The choice is yours. <laughs>